Welcome to the Taylor May Tasty Podcast. I'm Taylor, retired serial quitter turned goal boss coach, speaker, and consultant. I believe a beautiful life starts with a beautiful mindset. Join me as we amplify confidence, resilience, and actionable tools on the road to quit quitting on you and your vision. You are worthy of your goals. So let's go get there. Hey y'all, welcome back to another episode of Taylor Made Tasty, the podcast. Here we are with another 10 with Taylor. And because I am dealing with my own personal disappointment right now in a few ways, I wanted to offer some perspective about how to you turn your disappointment and choose to learn through it. I am officially 19 weeks away from my first ever full marathon and I just hired a running coach and a nutritionist and within hours of doing so, I bent over to pick up a water bottle and my back spasms. So I was cleaning the garage and I was about to do things like lift bins over my head, lift coolers over my head, bend over and pick up much heavier things. And yes, it was something as simple as me bending over to pick up a water bottle. Super disappointing. Uh, I have since found out that there are many reasons why this can happen, uh, as it's called a hot back. Uh, So I have a hot back, guys, right now. Don't be jealous. Uh, So my hot back reason... (laughs) Uh, hot girl back. That's what, that's what we're calling it. Hot girl back summer. Uh, the reasons that may have happened could be from a result of running and just the, the wear and tear on the body, but also the fact that I sit down, uh, in between running training, right? For most of my job. And then also sitting during activities like kayaking, floating, things like that, that are happening on the water. But truly, it was a moment of feeling like I was building my A-team and making huge strides in my running journey to have, to essentially having no control over my body. At first, I could barely walk, and thankfully now it's about 24 hours later as I'm recording this, I sought some care and feel about 60% better. But I would be lying if I didn't speak my truth of being so freaking disappointed. I have been building this consistency with doing a minimum of a mile every single day and had a streak going. I've been excited to get this running coach in place and get my training plan and really just hit the ground. And here I am forced into a break and I hate it. And although we all haven't been in this exact scenario, we have been disappointed before and have felt like some new unwanted challenge is happening around every corner in life. My best friend and I have this saying, it's always something. Whether it is running related or life related, there is always something coming up or happening that we have to learn to get through, get past, or get around. And as I sit here disappointed that it could be close to two weeks before I'm back to running and becoming increasingly more and more concerned about losing those two weeks out of a mere 19 weeks left and feeling very unprepared I've had to coach myself through how to U-turn this disappointment. And the first thing is to honor your feelings. I'm a big advocate for sitting with how you feel, saying how you feel, and honoring that is okay to feel how you feel. Allow yourself to feel disappointed. You may find your sense of peace more easily if you allow yourself not to be at peace with the initial shock of disappointment. 
Let the feelings and the waves of disappointment come and go. Speak it out loud, even if it's only to yourself. Speak it out loud and honor your feelings. The second is do a data check. Start to ask yourself questions. How bad is it? Is it really that bad? Will this matter in a month? Will this matter in a year? What else can I do? There is always a pivot, always a move you can make. Start to bring out your creative side and formulate a different plan. It can seem like the biggest, most horrible thing that can possibly happen, but we do tend to dramatize things (laughs) and we know that. So doing a data check by asking yourself questions will help you decipher between feelings and thoughts that are truthful versus feelings and thoughts that are dramatized. And lastly, positive solutions. In my community, I call my clients solution-oriented badasses. When a problem arises, we immediately look for a solution. When we get stuck focusing on bad news or the feeling of disappointment, we lose sight of what is right in our lives and what is right in the world around us. We lose the gratitude for how much we have to learn and the potential for the options that we have, right? Some of those options may come out of your data check too. Our brains are magic. They're neoplastic and that means we can rewire them to look for solutions. And once you formulate these positive solutions, you have found your U-turn point. You have found the point where you can decide, can I pivot in this direction? Can I jump over this hurdle? And what is that going to look like? I encourage and empower you to take these coaching tools and flip a bitch on that disappointment and bounce back to your badass self. All right, y'all, it is time for the quote of the episode. This quote is from Henry Ward Beecher, and the quote is, one's best success comes after their greatest disappointments. Henry Ward Beecher I need you to take that into your week, your month, maybe even your year, and own that you control the ability to you turn your disappointment into growth and success. As always, thank you for being here. Thank you for being in my community. I'm so glad you showed up today, and let's go get there. Look at you, crushing it. Thank you for joining me for another episode of the Tailor Made Tasty podcast. My hope is you always leave with a takeaway to implement in your own goal crushing journey. I would love if you could take a moment to leave a review. And if you're looking for a community of goal boss badasses just like you, be sure to check out tailormadetasty.com backslash membership. Thank you.